So it asks, uh, by how much is the approximation? Oh, yeah, that's the formula or equation for the magnetic field inside a solenoid. So let me mark it up. This is the uh, solenoid magnetic field, or in terms of uh, Coulomb's constant. Oh, yeah, that. Um, in error, at the center of a solenoid that is this long, has a diameter of this, is wrapped with n turns per meter, and carries a current i. Okay, so n and i are same symbols there. That's good. Uh, so what the question is asking you to work out is, so when we derive this formula for solenoid field using Ampere's law, we, are, we assume that we are dealing with an infinitely long solenoid. As in these um, turns, they kind of go on forever. And this uh, assumption that it's uh, infinitely long, it's uh, necessary uh, so that we can use translational symmetry. Um, so when we are using Ampere's law to find the solenoid field, we have to assume that it's infinitely long. Now, uh, your textbook actually does the finite version first using Biot-Savart's law. So there's a formula in the textbook that works this out for finitely long solenoid. So let's uh, look it up and um, and use that. I'm not going to redrive it because I feel like that'll take a long time and uh, your textbook has it. I remember seeing it. So let's go find it. So for solenoid, um, yeah, I think your textbook does a finite uh, version of that first. Yeah, so they all do this whole calculation integral and all that. And uh, here it is. So this is the formula that they derive for magnetic field. Um, again, they are calculating it at the very center point, midpoint between the ends of the, or actually, you know, I don't think this is necessarily the midpoint because you have a theta one and theta two. So yeah, depending on the values of theta one and theta two, it might not be midpoint, but it is along the center of the solenoid. Is that's the only position where it's relatively simple. So uh, what they have derived is, let me mark it up here so that I can uh, use that after we switch over the screen. So along these points, um, the formula that they have derived for magnetic field is uh, mu naught, which I'm going to write as uh, four pi k over c squared. Uh, times the current, times the, I think n is the total number of turns, um, divided by 2L, and they have this factor here, um, sine of theta 2 minus sine of theta 1. So, and uh, so those are for each one of these points, um, you are measuring uh, angles this way. So I guess, yeah, you know, I, those distinctions, it won't matter for us because I, I think the point that we are looking for will choose it symmetrically and it'll work out nicely. So let me not, um, but, but as I'm writing down these expressions, uh, theta two and uh, theta two and theta one. I should remember enough of it so that I can work it all out. For your in your textbook, uh, when they get the formula for the solenoid that's infinitely long, they take the limit where these angles theta two and theta one go to um, the values that goes all the way from. Uh, 90 degrees, oh, so these, ang okay, I need to mark up that much. So the angles are measured, um, so those angles theta are measured relative to, uh, me relative to a direction that's perpendicular to the center line. So, uh, so yeah, this, this is a theta one and theta two are measured. I mean, you know, it's actually measured to, to that, uh, that's theta one. So, 
Okay, yeah, yeah. I think I have enough there to work out the numerical value. Um, yeah, so in the textbook, when they do the uh, the derivation for infinitely long solenoid, they let these angles go to pi over two and minus pi over two. So, um, and it goes over, yeah, and they have n over l, which they turn into the number of turns per length. So, okay, back to our question. What we need to do is uh, figure out uh, some of the geometries based on the parameter given. So the formula that we are looking up has um, specifies the geometric parameters of the finite solenoid in terms of these angles, theta two and theta one. So let me draw a diagram that, um, a diagram for what they are asking for so that we have a clear picture. So we are looking for, uh, looking to compare these uh, in there at the center of a solenoid, and I'm going to assume by center they mean uh, like a dead center. So let me draw a cross section of solenoid from side. So that's gonna look rectangular. Let me uh, draw that and mark up the dimensions. It's going to look rectangular. The width will be the length of the solenoid, and the height will be the diameter of the solenoid. And we are looking at this point at the dead center. So for this point, the angle theta one will be this angle here. Yeah. This will be angle theta one, and the or uh, one of the two angles. Let's call, let me call this theta two. Uh, theta two, and theta one is uh, same in magnitude. It just goes in the opposite direction. And they, as you saw in the case where they are plugging in pi over two, they make the other direction negative. So, um, so you know, I can simplify this by saying, okay, both at for the point at the center, these two angles will be same in magnitude. So let me just call them both theta, and they are both thetas. And this expression simply becomes two sine theta. So I just need to work out what sine theta is, plug it in here and multiply through all these coefficients. So, um, and I think, uh, let's see, for this uh, N over L, um, I think I can just uh, uh, rewrite this N. So my, the, approximate uh, solenoid field has this expression um, 4 pi k over c squared or mu naught times i times n and for the exact solenoid field at the center has the same coefficient 4 pi k over c squared times same current i times the same um, n times ah and these two cancels out these two here so it's going to be just the sine theta where theta is that so the the amount that this exact calculation is different from approximation will be um, just depend on the sine theta. So let me work it out. Um, so theta, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite here is going to be L over 2. <laughs> um, the hypotenuse, um, oh, it'll be expression given by square root of um, D over 2 squared plus L over two squared. Um, so let me just work it out. Uh, so the sine theta here is uh, the opposite, L over two divided by square root of uh, uh, L over two squared plus D over two squared. Uh, this is something I can do in a scientific calculator and just get a numerical value based on the given values of L and D. Uh, I'm gonna just plug everything in centimeters and it'll just work out, uh, unit will cancel. 
So uh, 22 divided by 2, so 11 divided by square root of uh, one, uh, <laughs> 11 divided by, okay, let me do the parenthesis, actually one more parenthesis. Uh, okay. 11 divided by, just one parenthesis, L over 2, 11 squared plus D over 2, 2 centimeter squared close parenthesis, and if I click square root, it'll just take the square root of what's inside the parenthesis. Okay, good. Let me press equal to just get a numerical value. So that is the sign of theta, 0 0.9838. Um, so that's a, how much the exact value is smaller by. So the approximation will be, I think, greater greater by some percentage. I think if I take the reciprocal of this, that'll give me uh, how much the approximate value is greater by. It's greater by a factor of 1.01639. Or in percentage terms, um, you know, multiply this by 100. So it's greater by 1.64%. So that should be the answer. 1.64%. Yeah. So it's a number sense thing. And I hope as you take a, as you work through this question, you have some uh, sense this, uh, how big uh, this kind of solenoid is, you know, 22 centimeters long, four centimeter in diameter. That kind of looks like uh, the solenoid that I was showing um, at one of the other lecture videos earlier. So that's kind of typical regular sized you can hold in your hand the kind of solenoid. So it's not infinite by any uh, sense of the word infinite, but um, it's pretty close um, compared to the one where you you did the approximation for an infinitely long solenoid to only apply like 1.64% in the center. And it, it'll get worse as you go out, but it, it's not that bad of an approximation. And um, what it really is is that the the other loops that are uh, out supposed to be out here for the infinite version, um, they are so far away that they were um, either way they don't contribute much magnetic field. So whether you do the calculation including them, that's our infinite approximation, or you do exact calculation excluding them, they don't end up adding much because they are already so far away.